Welcome, I'll be reacting to The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. I don't know anything about this, other than the fact that likely there is the imprint of a departed soul. This is not a market substitute. Support the original. Still, you might have some consideration for your husband's memory. I don't see what Edwin's got to do with this. I'm not leaving him. I'm leaving you. Oh, <gasps> after all, oh, I like her already. Her. I have my own life to live, and and you have yeah, yours. Yeah, you tell them. And they simply won't mix. I've never had a life of my own. Don't expect any encouragement from me. I won't either. It's always a good sign when in the first five minutes, you love the main characters. It's been a year, so she can switch to half morning soon and wear some lavender. Actually, I'm surprised she doesn't have a few little half morning pins going already or some jewelry. Well, I've selected several prospects suitable to a young lady in uh, bereaved circumstances. What would make a house different for a young lady with bereaved circumstances versus a young lady who, I don't know, is just single? It's exactly the sort of place I'm looking for. Gull Cottage, oh no, no, that wouldn't suit you at all. Laburnum Mud, first not? class residential street. You may be sure there is nothing wrong with the drains. Then why shouldn't it suit me? Oh, my dear young lady, you must allow me to be the judge of that. <laughs> now, where were we? Uh, excuse me, Laburnum excuse Mud. me. You I'm sorry. Planted short walk from but bus I'm sorry, let her have Gull Cottage. House, I should be the judge. You'll only waste your time. But it's my time. I believe there's another house agency in Whitecliff. Perhaps they have Gull Cottage listed too. Very well, madam. If you insist. Lucy, I love you so much. Oh, that is pretty. Look at that view. It's perfect. It looks like it's in good shape inside. <gasps> there is a ghost! Oh, no, it's a painting. Of course. It's they had painting. me. I assure you this house will not suit you at all. Oh, but it does. What is he hiding? It suits me perfectly. What kind of a tree is it? I believe it is called a monkey puzzle tree. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it defies the efforts of monkeys to climb it, presumably. There was a huge monkey puzzle tree in front of the church that I went to when I was a little kid. And yeah, they, it's really sharp. Like, you cannot climb that tree. But it's really cool looking. I'll have it chopped down. Did she just feel a chill? Did you say something, Mr. Cool? No, I did not. I like that there was a slightly creepy moment there, but they didn't really show anything. Like, we didn't hear a voice. It was just all in her acting of just reacting to something that we couldn't see, which actually makes it even better. Ooh, look at that beautiful model ship. Was that his ship? Oh, I love this room. I want this room. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, Did you now we're hearing people? something. <laughs> Mr. Coon. If you would come, I, I didn't want to show it to you, but oh, no, no, you had to see it. Haunted. How perfectly <laughs> fascinating. Oh, she's so cool. At least you know now why it won't suit you. Yes, I, I suppose so. Oh, she Why wants it still. Haunt? Was he murdered? No, he committed suicide. <gasps> I wonder why. Come, we'll go to Laburnum Mountain. No, she's gonna rent it. Mrs. Muir. Mrs. Muir, if you please. She wants the challenge. You'll probably think it very silly of me, Mr. Coombe. But I've decided to take Gull Cottage after all. Thank you, Mr. Coombe. I've always wanted to be considered obstinate. <laughs> Very well, Mrs. Muir. Uh, On the understanding that I disclaim all responsibility for what may happen. She's clearly wearing a corset, and I appreciate that. And it looks like it fits her really well. Some of these period films, they throw them in a corset, it's really poor fitting, and you can tell the actor is uncomfortable. 
someone in the wardrobe department took the time to make sure it was properly fitted and she looks beautiful in it and super comfortable, which is how it should be. Oh, hurt yourself? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, it's nothing, just a scrape. Oh, is this him? Did I close the window before I went to sleep? You did, and scraped your finger, don't you remember? It's shut now, ain't it? Yes. I have a couple of candlesticks like that, that are easy to hold. They come in really handy when the power goes out. Oh! This house really needs better latches. I'm just saying. Go to the hardware store first thing in the morning. <laughs> Are you afraid to speak up? Now, if the demonstration is over, I'll thank you not to interfere while I boil some water for my hot water. Light the candle. <laughs> Go ahead. Light it. Whoa. Well? You'll forgive me if I, if I take a moment to get accustomed to you. Why, I mean, because of the way you died. Wow, she is really, I die. really brave. I must have kicked the gas on with my foot in my sleep. It was a stormy night, like this. With half a gale blowing from the south southwest into my window, so I shut them as any sensible man would. Wouldn't you? Yes, I. I suppose so. Then the coroner's jury brought it in a suicide because me blasted charwoman testified I always slept my windows open. Now that was enough for all the others. They didn't want any part of it, let me tell you. Didn't even stop to weigh anchor. They just cut their cables and ran. I think it's very mean of you, frightened. <laughs> I love their relationship. Childish too. Because she is super stubborn and not afraid of him. And I think he might kind of like her too. <laughs> I opened the window because I didn't want another accident with a blasted gas. Women are such fools. <gasps> Ooh, you she's a, not going to take that. should not have brought that up. But I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind... Tell him. I have tea to make. My dear woman, it's not your house. It is as long as I pay rent. You may stay. On trial. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Keep your distance, madam. You might at least have turned the light back on before you left. <laughs> oh, I love these two. <laughs> I don't think that's going to do anything, but I totally understand. It's a pretty rig you have on. Much better than smothering yourself in all that ugly black crepe. I happen to have been wearing mourning for my husband. Whom you didn't love. I think he's right, though. How dare you say that? Because it's true. You were fond of him, perhaps, but you didn't love him. Why did you marry him? Edwin? I don't really know. Reading lyric poetry up in the crow's nest. With the sheets <laughs> bellying in the wind. Sails blast it all, madam. A sheet's a line, a rope. Ropes can't belly. Dear, whatever can they want? Who is it? My blasted in-laws. Ooh, haunt them. Scare them off. Have some fun, Captain. And what a hideous painting. Anyone with a face like yours, madam, should steer clear of expressing such opinions. Why on earth don't you take it down? Your gold mine, Lucy, it's petered off. They've stopped paying dividends. It was in the Times this morning. Oh, he's going to have some fun. ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to want rent. And I've often thought of you out here alone, without the protection of a man, the right man, could offer you. <laughs> oh, Captain. 
You're going to write a book. A book? I can write a book, and you can put it down on paper for me. But what will the book be about? Me. The story of my life. And we'll call it uh, Blood and Swash. <laughs> yes, Blood and Swash uh, by Captain X. I don't think that's at all a nice title. Women named Lucy are always being imposed upon, but Lucia, oh, there's a name for an Amazon, for a queen. Mm. Well, it's a perfectly good word. I think it's a horrid word. It, it means what it says, doesn't it? All too clearly. But what's the word? What's the word? It certainly is unvarnished. Well, smear on your own varnish. <laughs> Change the grammar all you please, but leave the guts in it. You, uh, you still have freckles. Only seven of them. And I'm told they're most becoming. They are at that. Good heavens, eleven o'clock. I got a little money put by, Mum. There ain't be nothing to spend it on here. Oh, thank you, Martha. But I wouldn't dream of taking it. We'll manage somehow. Yes. That's one thing I like about these older films, is while there are a lot of characters who have terrible flaws, which is great, they always throw in a couple of secondary characters that you can really look up to. And I know it's a small thing, but it's a good reminder that there are genuinely kind, amazing people in the world. And that little bit of background hopefulness is something that's missing in a lot of modern films and I just wanted to point that out and even though they don't have the flashy special effects I still find them absolutely fascinating you've been working too hard trooped up in the house too long you need a change of scene but I love it here you'll be out in the world more meeting people seeing men I have no desire to see men oh I think she's falling in love with him yeah, and there's nothing she can do because he's a spirit, and she's now realizing that. But I have a manuscript. So you have a manuscript. Most on so everyone no else. In your adenoids and your bad manners. Now take the lady's name. Is it really very important for you to see old Sproul? Oh yes, so important. Then see him, you shall. So you may have my appointment for which you are just in time. 20 million discontented females in the British Isles, and every blessed one of them is writing a novel. But I... Now, don't tell me what's in it, I know. It's the unvarnished record of a sailor's life. A sailor's life? Mm-hmm. Perhaps I have time for a few pages of that. Of course we'll publish it, Mrs. Muir. Now you're empowered yes. by the captain to act for him. <laughs> yes, he's, he's given me the rights. Good. Oi, cab! But she doesn't have any money to pay for the cab. I mean, that's nice of you, but are you going to pay for it, too? Where to? Victoria. Victoria. What a coincidence. Victoria, cabby. Oh, I see. You're adored by half the children in the world. Uncle Neddy is opposed. Deep in my innermost heart, I, I loathe the little monsters. My little daughter is not a monster. And she'll be very excited to know I've been talking to her favorite author. Yeah, he is super smitten, and I can't really blame him for that. Anyway, I should never see him again. Mm. Cheer off, you blasted mud turtle. There's no room. I beg your pardon, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad, is it? I think it's very flattering, mm -hmm. Rick. Really. Need a thousand Renoirs. I don't know. I think she kind of likes this guy. Even though he doesn't deserve it. He'll stay or he'll go away. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Oh, I think it does. I think it matters to you more than you'll admit. You know who you're really in love with right now. And it's not the children's author. I'm just worried she's transferring her feelings onto him just because he's alive and it's not about him at all. I, I 
can't help you now. I can only confuse you more and destroy whatever chance you have left of happiness. You must make your own life amongst the living. Find your own way to harbor. You've been dreaming. Dreaming of a sea captain that haunted this house. It's been a dream. Fjords in the midnight sun. No, don't go. Sail across the reef at Barbados, where the blue water turns to green. I gave up everything to do the right thing for her. That's love. Would you please give me Mr. Fairley's address? Uh, Miles Fairley? Yes, please. He's going to be with another woman, isn't he? Is he already married? The maid said you wanted to see my husband. <gasps> yes, I can help you. Oh, <laughs> busted. Or if you, if you don't mind waiting, he should be back soon. He or at least she knows now. That explains why he kept trying to come in that one night earlier. And she's like, no, we have plenty of time. And he's like, no, now. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is my favorite dress of hers so far. I absolutely adore it. It's the 1920s now. Subtle change of costuming here, but effective. A lot of time has passed. And look at the car. Yeah. We'll sing out when we watch you. Come on, mommy. <laughs> She's just like her mother. You to come and live with us, you and Martha. Oh, no, darling. Oh, but you must. You've been alone so much of your life. You're very kind, but... Oh, they're properly aging her now. What were you doing out there? I don't know. Waiting for him. Oh, she's gonna drop it. Oh no. And he's, now he's here. you'll never be tired again. Come, Lucia. Come, my dear. Never thought I'd be this happy to watch someone die. <laughs> he waited for her. There's one thing that these classic movies do really well, and that is tug on your heartstrings at the end. I don't know how they do it every single time, but they do. The character of Lucy was fantastic. We came at it right when she was at a turning point in her life and realizing, I've done everything for other people and it's time to do something that I want to do. And just taking off on her own and in that trajectory is when she met the captain and that's how they were able to really connect and find admiration for each other. And then later we see her slipping and getting lonely, really just wanting companionship and being willing to ignore the good advice of everyone around her and just go for the first guy who showed any interest. And I actually like that she showed some weakness there and wasn't a perfect heroine because, you know, people aren't. And I'm so glad that she found out the truth in time. It also has that romantic storyline of maybe you don't find happiness in this life. Maybe you're only going to find it in the next life. Which is really encouraging to a lot of us who are not likely to find it in this life. And I know this is getting a little bit philosophical, but it's probably my favorite kind of romantic story is you know what you might not find someone you might die alone and that's perfectly fine it's not the end there's still room for finding someone after that and it's the moment that you give up that it's the end and she never really did she stayed in that house by herself until she was dead. Because part of her deep down genuinely believed her love was waiting for her. And I'm not propounding that everyone should just hole up by themselves. 
uh, by the sea. I'm just saying that I'm very glad that these sorts of stories exist, that not all the great romances have to happen while you're alive, and that death is not something to be feared, which is a philosophy that I have. And I think that's why I really enjoyed this movie. I'm not a big fan of those, oh, we met two times and we hit it off and now it's this great romance. No, I like the ones that are a little bit more slow burn. An entire lifetime goes by and they're still not together. And then finally, at the very end in the last sequence, we get to see them start the next chapter. This is the kind of story that I personally enjoy the most. So thank you for the suggestion and the comments. If you have any favorite classic older films, let me know.